I'm drawing a simple contour drawing on some hot press 140 pound arches uh, watercolor paper. I'm, I want to just give myself a road map for the painting. I don't want to get into a lot of detail. I'm not going to draw every petal of this complicated image. So I'm just putting in some stems and then the contour of the outside of the sprays, wherever the, I see a hard edge. Try not to get too fussy. It can be a daunting image when you have all that complicated uh, flowers. And this is my reference photo that I got from unsplash.com and the photographer is Alyssa Fondrich and she has given her permission to use this image. Uh, this is one I did uh, a few days before and it's on Canson paper and it puddles in some places and dries too fast in others but uh, it works out fine having a lot of blooms. This is on cold press arches and here this is the rougher surface. It's the most forgiving of the watercolor papers because it um, uh, it holds the moisture longer. So now I'm applying water to the just to the parts of the painting that are in the background. So I'm leaving the spray of blossoms that is closest to me, closest to the viewer, dry. And this is my way of creating a resist. Uh, rather than use a mask, um, I just paint around with the water and then I can drop the color in and as soon as the color drips down and hits the dry paper it stops. So it's and then I can use the point of my in this case it's a squirrel brush, a silver black velvet and uh, I can use the tip to really carve out those hard edges and add a little detail. So this is, I love working this way. It's just, I'm bringing a little um, color into the negative areas in the spray of flowers so it isn't too solid a mass. So I'm bringing some background in there. And so this is going to give me a really soft pink background. So that's the blossoms that are out of focus. So here I'm getting just a little fussy but not too fussy. So in this hot, hot press paper um, Sometimes the paper will dry too fast in some places and so I might give it a little spritz with my atomizer. And I like to tilt my paper and use gravity. Here I'm applying salt. And now for the other side. So I, I have the color at the tip so I can really get in there and carve those edges and then I can press down with the brush to release water. And here I'm kind of drawing with my tissue to give a little soft shape to that background spray of blossoms.
a little more salt. So here's, again, I'm mixing. Uh, this is where I have, I have dried the paper with a hair dryer. And you can see the beautiful texture that the salt created. So I really don't have to do much at all in the background. I've mixed permanent rose with cobalt blue. And um, for the shadow areas on the blossoms in the foreground. I want to preserve the whites. And the color I'm putting down now is going to lighten. So I'm going to keep going back with darker and richer color. Now I'm dropping in a little yellow just to warm things up. So the yellow and the pink make a nice orangey color. So when I paint shadows like that, I, I don't like to use one color for the shadow. I really look at my source and, and see what colors I see. I like to go from warm to cool. So some places may have a more orangey shadow and some people, uh, some places uh, bluer. Now this is where you can really get kind of carried away and be a little overwhelmed with the details. This is usually when I get out my rigger brush and I'll do a little spatter. So you may see that pretty soon. Here's where I'm adding some richer color. And when you work on a tilt, you, it's just wonderful to watch the color drift, drift down if your paper's wet. And it's important not to feel like it's perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly like the photo, for sure. and. Uh, and it always dries a little lighter. So this, uh, these brushes that I use, I can really get a broad stroke with them by pressing down, or I can get this very careful detail using just the tip. A lot of people will want to use a, a very small brush to do this kind of detail. And then they have to keep going back and replenishing the brush. And it ends up being a lot of dry marks. So here I have the option to press down with the brush and release a lot of water. So besides the hard edge I've created, I've also got a soft edge on the other side of the stroke. Okay, here comes the rigger brush. 
and this this is I, I always enjoy doing the spatter <laughs> and it, it just uh, keeps things fresh especially if I've started to get too tight so now I'm I'm going to do the branches now so I'm going to hold the I'm checking on my neutral color I created a neutral color by combining my three primaries and uh, so I'm going to hold the brush up near the tip and that way I can't get too smooth a line. I'm holding it straight up and down and I want to try to get an erratic brush stroke and uh, because cherry blossom uh, cherry branches rather are kind of uh, wiggly and gnarly and uh, so I like to after I have a neutral uh, branch then I drop some pure pigment in uh, I've introduced sap green so I'm going to drop a little of that in spots into the still wet branches and uh, so that makes the twig uh, much more colorful and more interesting than if I just mixed one color or if I just reached for a brown and painted with that. So I'm just trying to make a wiggly branch. And the, the branches play peekaboo with the blossoms. So they give, uh, add more depth to the blossoms in the foreground. And drop a little green in there. I don't want them to be too crisp, so I'll pro I'm going to just kind of do a wet wash over them and just kind of blur them a little bit. As some violet is. I'm going to start deepening the background behind the foreground blossoms. And here's a warmer color. I'm doing the centers of the blossoms that are facing me. And so that orange is a nice, happy accent. Now I've introduced some cerulean blue just to switch things up a little and the cerulean mixes nicely with the permanent rose. It gives a beautiful lavender color. And uh, it's a nice shadow color in itself. It's beautiful combined with the permanent rose. The cobalt's a very neutral blue, 
mid value and it's a really safe color to use and it's a good mixer it gets along with everybody but the cerulean has some uh it's a light value blue it's uh almost opaque so you have to be careful where you use it This is where I'm getting a little finicky. Just trying to get a little more contrast using a smaller brush here, probably a six or an eight. Yeah, I'm definitely getting too fussy here. Sometimes I just get into the zone and uh, I just keep picking away. That's when it's good to stop and stand back and see what see the big picture. So all those colors I thought were dark when I put them on, they've dried and and now uh, they need a little more punch. So I'm going to put some more darks in right there. So here I'm going in with uh, a dark dark. Well, maybe not, not as dark as the uh, branches, but pretty dark. I really want to set off that that bloom. So I, I use the tip to really get into those little spa tight spaces and then I can press down with the brush and release the water. And dropped a little little green, suggesting some more stems, and maybe just the beginning of some leaves. So I keep asking myself what white blossoms do I want to pop? And then I put something dark next to it with a hard edge. So by adding a little yellow to my uh, violet mix, it dulls it down, makes it a little bit more neutral. And so this is where I wrap things up. I put it, I stop painting and I look at it for a few days and see if the fairies have worked on it. Then I know I'm done. Always stop before you think you're finished. speed things up now as we finish
finish up the painting. I love to watch myself work really fast. It looks like I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> no hesitation. Thank you for watching me paint and uh, happy spring.